Hello, my name is Harold Hafton, and welcome to Archaeological Minecraft. I'm a former archaeologist who enjoys playing Minecraft and thought it would be fun to combine the two. Now, I know what you're thinking. Hafton, what the heck are you wearing? Well, happy Halloween! You like my costume? I'm dressed as Geralt of Rivia from The Witcher, and what better outfit to be wearing for this episode as we tell the story of one of the famous monsters of Eastern European and Slavic folklore, Baba Yaga. This episode, as you might have guessed, is going to be a bit different, as this is a Halloween special. So instead of being a history lesson about Baba Yaga, instead I'm going to tell you a story, and while doing so, going to build Baba Yaga's famous residence, her hut on chicken's legs. The story I'm going to tell comes from the Russian folktales by Alexander Asenafiev, the 1916 edition, translated by Leonard A. Magnus. I'm trying to avoid any copyright issues by using such an old work. I would also love to have the background music for this be Modest Mazursky's Pictures at an Exhibition, where the ninth movement in that work is called The Hut on Hen's Legs, Baba Yaga. But I couldn't find any copyright-free versions of the work. However, I have included links to a great version of that complete work in the description below, as well as a link to the Russian folktales from where I'm telling this story. Just note, I did abridge it a little bit and alter a couple of things. The story I'm going to tell out of that work is called Vasilisa the Fair. If you aren't already familiar with it, you should spot some interesting and familiar themes from other fairy tales you do know. So let's jump into it. Once upon a time, there was a merchant who had been married for 12 years and had only one daughter, Vasilisa the Fair. When her mother died, the girl was eight years old. On her deathbed, the mother called the maiden to her, took a doll and said, I am dying and I will leave you my mother's blessing and this doll. Keep this doll always with you, but show it to no one, and no misfortune can befall you. Give it food and ask it for advice. After it has eaten, it will tell you how to avoid your evil. Then the mother kissed the daughter and died. After the wife's death, the merchant mourned, and then he thought of a second wife. He was a handsome man and found many brides, but he liked one widow more than anyone she had two daughters about the same age as Vasilisa. The merchant married her, but he had made a mistake, for she was no good mother to his own daughter. Vasilisa was the fairest damsel in the entire village, and the stepmother and the sisters envied her therefore. And they used to torture her by piling all the work they could on her, so she may grow thin and ugly, and might be tanned by the wind and the sun. Vasilisa, however, did all her work without complaining and always grew more beautiful. How could this be? It was the doll that helped Vasilisa. Without her, the maiden could never have done her task. Vasilisa would give the doll food to eat, and then the doll gave her good advice, consoled her, and did all her morning's work for her. One day, the merchant had to go away on business for a long time, so the stepmother, in the meantime, went over to a new house near a dense forest. In the forest there was a meadow, and on the meadow, there was a hut, and in the hut Baba Yaga lived, who would not let anyone in and ate up men as if they were poultry. Whilst she was moving, the stepmother sent her hated stepdaughter into the woods, but she always came back perfectly safe, for the doll showed her the way which she could go to avoid Baba Yaga's hut, as the hut was on hen's legs and moved about the forest. So one day the harvest season came, and the stepmother gave her three maidens their tasks for the evening. One was to make lace, the other was to sew stockings, and Vasilisa was to spin. The mother put all the fires out in the entire house and left only one candle burning where the maidens were at work, but soon that candle burnt out. What's to be done now, they said. There is no fire in the house and our work is not finished. We must get a light from the Baba Yaga. I can see by my needles, said the one who was making lace. I am also not going, said the second, for my knitting needles give me enough light. You must go get some fire. Go to Baba Yaga. And they turned Vasilisa out of the room. And Vasilisa went to her room, put meat and drink before her doll and said, Doll, dear, eat it and listen to my complaint. They are sending me to Baba Yaga for fire and the Baba Yaga will eat me up. And then the doll ate and her eyes glittered like two lamps. And she said, Fear nothing. Do what they say. Only take me with you. As long as I am with you, Baba Yaga can do you no harm. Vasilisa put the doll in her pocket, crossed herself, and went trembling out into the dark forest. Suddenly, a knight on horseback galloped past her, all in white. His cloak was white, his horse and reins, and it all became light. She went further, and suddenly another horseman passed by, 
who was all in red, and his horse was red, and his clothes, and the sun rose. Vasilisa went through the night and the next day, and she came to where Baba Yaga's hut stood. The fence around the hut consisted of human bones, and the stakes, skeletons, glared out of their empty eyes. And instead of the doorways and the gate, there were feet, and instead of bolts, there were hands, and instead of the lock, there was a mouth with sharp teeth, and Vasilisa was stone cold with fright. Suddenly, another horseman pranced by on his way. He was all in black on a jet black horse with a jet black cloak. He sprang to the door and vanished as if the earth had swallowed him up, and it was night. But the darkness did not last long, for the eyes and the skeletons on the fence glistened, and it became as light as day all over the green. Vasilisa trembled with fear, but remained standing, for she did not know how she could escape. Suddenly there was a terrible noise heard in the forest, and the tree brows creaked and the dry leaves cracked. Out of the wood, Baba Yaga drove. Inside, a person-sized mortar with a pestle and with a broom swept away every trace of her steps. And at the door she stopped, sniffing all the way around, and cried out, Who is there? Vasilisa shuddered with dread, stepping up to her, bowed low to the ground and said, Mother, I am here. My stepmother's daughter sent me to you to ask for a fire. Very well, said Baba Yaga. I know them. Stay with me, work with me, and I will give you fire. Otherwise, I shall eat you up. Then she went to the door and cried out, and the door sprang open, and Baba Yaga went in, and Vasilisa followed her. Then the door closed, and Baba Yaga stretched herself in the room and said to Vasilisa, Give me whatever there is in the oven. I am hungry. So Vasilisa lit a splinter from the skulls on the hedge and fetched Baba Yaga food out of the oven. And there was enough food for ten men. Out of the cellar she fetched kvass, mead, and wine. Baba Yaga ate and drank it all up. But all there was left for Vasilisa was a little kind of soup, a crust of bread, and a snippet of pork. Baba Yaga laid down to sleep and said, In the morning, tomorrow, I will go away. You must clean the courtyard, brush out the room, get dinner ready, do the washing, go to the field, get a quart of oats, sift it all out, and see it's all done before I come home. Otherwise, I will eat you up. And then, as soon as she had given all the orders, she began snoring. Vasilisa put the rest of the dinner in front of the doll and said, Eat it up and listen to my woe. Heavier the task that Baba Yaga has given me, and she threatens to eat me up if I don't carry them out. Help me. Have no fear, Vasilisa. Eat, pray, and lie down to sleep, for the morning is wiser than the evening. Very early the next day, Vasilisa woke up. Baba Yaga was already up and looking out the window. The white horseman raced by, and it dawned. Baba Yaga went to the courtyard and whistled, and the mortar and pestle and the broom appeared at once, and the red horseman came by, and the sun rose. Baba Yaga sat in the mortar and went by, thrusting the mortar with the pestle, and the broom she removed every trace of her step. Vasilisa, left all by herself, looked over the house, wondering at all the wealth gathered in it, and began to consider what she should start with. But all the work was already done, and the doll was just finishing sifting the good oats from the moldy oats. Oh, my savior, said Vasilisa, you have helped me in my great need. You have only now to get dinner ready, the doll answered and clambered back into Vasilisa's pocket. In the evening, Vasilisa laid the cloth and waited for Baba Yaga. The glooming came, and the black horseman reached by, and once again it was dark. But the eyes of the skulls glowed, the trees shuddered, the leaves crackled, Baba Yaga drove in, and Vasilisa met her. Is it all done? Baba Yaga asked. Yes, Grandmother, look, said Vasilisa. Baba Yaga looked around everywhere and was rather angry that she had nothing to find fault with and said, Very well. Then she cried out, Yea, my faithful servants, friends of my heart, store up my oats. And then three pairs of hands appeared, seized the oats, and carried them off. Baba Yaga sat down to dinner and Vasilisa sat silently in front of her. Why do you not speak? Why do you sit there as if you were dumb? Baba Yaga asked. To which Vasilisa responded, I did not venture to say anything, but if I might, I should like to ask some questions. Ask, but not every question turns out well. Too knowing is too old. Still, I should like to ask you of some things I saw. On my way, I met a white horseman in a white cloak on a white horse. Who was he? The bright day. Then a red horseman on a red horse in a red cloak overtook me. Who was he? The red sun said Baba Yaga. What is the meaning of the black horse who overtook me as I reached the door, grandmother? That was the dark night, said Baba Yaga. Those are my faithful servants. 
Vasilisa then thought about the three pairs of hands and said nothing. Why don't you ask me further? Babi Yaga asked. To which Vasilisa responded, I know enough, for you say yourself, too knowing is too old. It is well you asked only about the things you saw in the courtyard and not the things without it. For I do not like people to tell tales out of school, and I eat up everyone who is too curious. But now I shall ask you, how did you manage to do all the work I gave you? My mother's blessing, said Vasilisa. Ah, then get off with you as fast as you can, blessed daughter. No one blessed may stay with me. So she turned Vasilisa out of the room and kicked her out the door, took a skull with the burning eyes from the fence and put it on a staff, gave it to her and said, Now you have fire for your stepmother's daughters, for that was what they sent you here for. Then Vasilisa ran home as fast as she could by the light of the skull. By the evening of the next day she had reached the house and was going to throw the skull away, but then she heard a hollow voice coming out of the skull saying, Do not throw me away, bring me to your stepmother's house. And then she looked at her stepmother's house and saw that there was no light in any window and decided to enter with the skull. The sisters told her that ever since she had gone away they had had no fire and they were not able to make any, and all that they borrowed from their neighbors went out as soon as they came into the room. Possibly your fire may burn, said the stepmother. So they took the skull into the room, and the burning eyes looked into the stepmothers and the daughters, and singed out their eyes. Wherever they went, they could not escape it, for the eyes followed them everywhere, and in the morning, they were all burnt to cinders. Vasilisa alone was left alive. Well, I hope you enjoyed the tale. There was more to the story yet, where Vasilisa moves to a town and with the help of her doll spins a cloth so fair it catches the attention of the Tsar and he hunts out the creator of the cloth as he wanted to make some fine clothes from it. When he finds her, he and Vasilisa fall in love as is apt to happen in fairy tales. And so I'll think I'll end the story there. As you see, I tried to incorporate the different aspects of Baba Yaga's hut from the story into my build. I hope this maybe acts as a little inspiration to build your own Halloween build in Minecraft this year. Well, that wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed my recreation of Baba Yaga's hut, and I hope you enjoyed the story of Vasilisa the Fair. As always, I put some resources that explain more about Baba Yaga in the description, so you can check out those if you want to learn more. I hope you like this different kind of video and the Halloween special, and if you did like it, please like, subscribe, and all that stuff. Have a good rest of your day. Happy Halloween. Bye for now.